Alrighty, fantastic. You are still watching Hashtag Why in the Morning right here on Y254 TV. You can find us on all our social media platforms. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is at Y254 channel. Remember on Instagram, there's an underscore. And also you can find me on my socials at Brian Sako 101 That's my Twitter, Instagram, and also on Facebook. Remember, the segment is Entrepreneurship Tuesday, where we bring you uh, influential sometimes, let's say powerful and a very a significant guest who actually come here to share insights on how you can start up a business. Where do you get those hugs? And I love that today we have quite uh, a good number of guests who are coming through to actually take on this topic about entrepreneurship. If you are out there back at home and you want to start something for yourself to earn a living, to ensure that you make money, that's literally the most important part. We've got you right here. Now joining me live in studio, she's no new to your screen. She's been here before. Before, not here before, but in the space before. And uh, she's a radio presenter, a media consultant, a TV presenter as well, an actress. And the one and only joining us right live in studio is Anne Mora. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you properly. In person yeah. Now, properly, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, the industry is so small, but right. it's still not small enough. You, you know, know, somebody once said Nairobi is a small bedroom. Yeah. I think it should be a small sitting room now. It's, yeah. <laughs> a living yeah. room. We're growing. We're building a house here. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're here today to actually, you know, share with us a few insights on a media consultancy. Now, for a person who's watching back at home and uh, they're wondering, what is media consultancy? And first of all, what is consultancy? Okay, so consultancy is basically giving your expertise and experience into something. For me, it's media, right? So I teach uh, individuals, companies, or like let's say a podcast, how to get onto media, how to conduct interviews, um, how to structure a media plan as well so they can become more recognized and more seen in the space because people don't realize how important marketing is when it comes to a product. And sometimes you are the product and right. you might be a bit lost on how how to get yourself seen and more out there. Uh, so what I do is come in, I consult, I give you a whole structured plan on what you can do to be more visible as a right. product. And, and visibility is very important. Now, when it comes to the financial part of it, uh, especially for, let's say, let's say, for example, for a startup, uh, somebody wants to, you mentioned podcast, somebody wants to start a podcast and they're looking for ideas and they want to come up with something that's edgy, interesting and catchy to the people who maybe they want to appeal to. Is it also something that, you know, you help people like redefine and, you know, choreograph an audience for themselves? Yes. So I teamed up with a company called Eminent Media who are based in Canada. Canada, uh, but now they have set up a shop here as well. So it makes it more easier for us to set a structure for you. Um, it's on a different case by case basis. So let's say if you're starting a podcast and you're KBC, I'm not going to charge you the same thing, but right. I will teach you some financial literacy on like, uh, this is how much you need to invest into this company. And then they also now will help you with the back end of that on how to make a website, um, how to have a financial structure and all of that. So they even put you in financial courses as well. Right. Uh, people don't realize like there's a lot of free courses in LinkedIn right, that LinkedIn, you yeah. might not know about. So they normally set a structure for you, like a little course that helps you get started and get going. Yeah, I, I love the fact that, you know, it includes financial literacy, which is like, you know, one of the biggest uh, uh, items when you're setting something for yourself, especially that you want, you know, to be visible out there to the people. Now, when it comes to financial or to, to, to the finances, are there some of the things maybe that, you know, a person should consider before even they seek maybe your services? You mentioned imminent. Uh, Are there yeah. things maybe it's like a package or something? So with Eminent Media, they now will do a case-by-case -case basis as well. So um, sometimes, let's say if you are a bigger media house or let's say if you are a restaurant or a bigger company, then yes, they will charge you. Uh, if you're starting out or you individually are the product that you want to be more put out there, then they create a foundation for you to be able to get started because you can sometimes start for free. You just need your phone um, and great content or something you need to be doing, right? right so what yeah. they do is now work with you to see how you can get your footing and then from there, they'll start to charge you once your footing is, is, is it's in place. Right, interesting. Now I want us to go back to you now, personally. Now a little bit of you. Uh, you, uh, I see you intern for Imun, that is in UNESCO, in an understudy for an ICJ judge as yeah. a previous MUN delegate in Washington, that is in the United States, the Hague and Kenya. 
So uh, would you say is that what put you on the map towards, you know, that kind of trajectory? Living in states, you also schooled in states yes. and whatnot, right? Yeah, I was in University of Tampa and um, when, when I interned, you know, for the IMUN and when I did the understudy judge for you know, ICJ, that gave me confidence because you're in a space with some of the best people in the world and they have this confidence. So it, it definitely gave me structure as well as this confidence that I can do anything and I can try. It also gave me another perspective on how people think. So, I mean, if you have children, I definitely would suggest putting them in like programs like MUN, IMUN, um, finding these types of things honestly gives you a better, a better set of confidence in being able to publicly speak as well. You just kind of feel, you feel yourself more, right. you know, you know, you're able to project what you want to say a lot better. So I think these are great platforms that anyone should try out. Right, interesting details right there. Now, when you came back to Kenya, uh, you uh, in your bio is actually checking out. Yeah, I'd say maybe in 2018, that's when you like officially got inducted into the Kenyan media space. Yes. And uh, maybe just to ask, are this maybe some of the hits and the misses that you've learned that maybe you as a brand and also as a consultant that you love to come and chip in and help some media stations or media companies to actually, you know, rise up on their feet again, get that good look for themselves and actually appeal to their audience. Yes, I think people need to be okay with failing, right? There's so many failures behind the scenes that people might not have noticed, but you have to be okay with failing. Um, you also have to put your best foot forward. I apply for everything. So yes, in 2018, that's when Capital, Capital One competition happened. And when you apply yourself, the only thing that can go wrong is you get a no this time. Right. And then the next time you're going to get yeses. You, eventually, if you keep on going, you get that yes. So yes, definitely there's been hits and misses behind the scenes. Um, but it's just about how you stand up, dust yourself off and restructure. It's all about restructuring what you want to achieve. Have right. a goal in mind. And then after that, you go for it. Go for it with everything that you have. And that would be my, one of my best advices to anybody. Right. Yeah. You mentioned no's, you know, <laughs> for somebody who's starting out there back at home and uh, they want to venture into radio, yeah. not even as a host, of course, but maybe you just want to own, like uh, you mentioned podcast as well, and you're trying to reach out to some of these, you know, media managers, these media owners, some of these uh, uh, media, let's call them media maven, because I'll say you're a media marvel as oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if somebody is trying to reach out to maybe a person to actually put them on the map when it comes to their brand, how do they go about it? And if they come to you as well as a consultant, how would you help them to get in line? I mean, I would say start by going to my website, www.anmora.com, and you'll find it very simply. It's under the media consultancy um, area. Another thing I always suggest is that people need to go onto Instagram, go onto Facebook. Your celebrities are there, media houses are there, and they check their DMs. And if you have a proper structured message of what you want to achieve, then you'd be going so much further than if you just said, hi. Right. And then nothing follows after. Say, hi, this is who I am. This is what I'm capable of doing. This is what I want to achieve. Could we just set up a meeting or a phone call or an email? Can we move it to email, which is more professional? And maybe we can go from there. So I think it's definitely using the resources that you have with you. And that is social media. It's the biggest tool that you have with you. So I would suggest using that first right. um, before storming into like a media house and saying, give me a job. Physically, right. Yeah. So I'd say use everything that you've got. And that's definitely your connections as well, your net worth. Right. Yeah. And, and speaking of social media, because... Uh, at least right now, especially in Kenya, like previously we never used to have like people who are so big on the digital platform. Right now, a lot of people, especially upcoming content creators, we've had, we've now got influencers and I love that even on this show, we've hosted a couple of them. All they, the, all they are talking about is appealing content, content that's attractive now, right. content that's actually captivating for people back at home. Now, uh, let's say for example, in a situation, because uh, I think we've got two minutes before we take a break. Mm -hmm. um, if we, uh, for example, a station wants to come up with a good outlook that's so appealing, let me, let me call it some edgy sort of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a brand that's actually appealing to their audience. How do they go about it just shortly? So the back end is definitely study your audience, know exactly what they've liked before. So you can, mar it's market trends basically. So knowing what time to post as well, something as simple as knowing what time to post, uh, what type of content, what color scheme do they enjoy as well. Um, it's about knowing your audience and then feel, like give them the information but also so educate and entertain them right is the best way to do it educate so knowing, and entertain them yeah, knowing educate your audience, and right. yeah know your audience educate and entertain them
Right. Yeah. And I think on that note, we are taking a short break. When we come back, we have more to actually understand and hear from Anne. She's going to share with us also some of her highs and some of her lows. Uh, how did she actually now get so solidified and fortified into the media space and finally get to do media consulting? And also mental health. Mantis mental health. And I love that the previous guest also is here to actually talk about, you know, the importance, you know, of having mental health conversations in workspaces, homes, schools, institutions, personal levels. That one is going to be coming up next next after short break. Continue to interact with us on our social media. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter is at Y254 channel. My socials is at Brian Sucker 101. Ensure that you keep the hashtag Y in the morning. Alrighty, fantastic. You are still hanging out with us on the segment Entrepreneurship Tuesday and we are talking about Matters Media Consultancy and we are hanging out with the one and only Anne Maura who is also a mediapreneur. She's a TV presenter, actress, uh, also voiceover artist, and many other things in there that involves Matters Media. Now, before we went on a break, Anne, we were talking about, you know, how you can have a visible presence for your brand, especially whatever whatever it is. It's an, a, a starting up station, a podcast, and whatnot. Now, uh, let's switch a little bit Matters into mental health. You're, you're also big on that as well. Yeah. And uh, in your description, you talked about how it's so necessary and so important to actually, you know, um, have your employees, even employers as well, to just, you know, be aware about, you know, Mantis mental health, mm -hmm. especially in the media space, in a setup where, you know, radio TV presenters, producers, ETC, why is it important actually to have such a conversation? Because breaking the stigma, everyone goes through something at some point and breaking that stigma is so essential to me. I think when it comes to media especially, you're giving a lot of yourself, your personality uh, daily and constantly. You don't switch off. Like after this, you know, if you go to a restaurant, if you decided to act the fool, then right. it's going to affect your business. A lot right. of other businesses don't have that same luxury or detriment as well. So I think mental health, speaking about it, breaking that stigma is so essential to remind yourself that you're not alone in this island. There's everyone else is going through something as well. And it's easier to heal once you have someone, a group of people around you who are also working hard towards that. Right. Yeah. Uh, because. Uh, in Kenya, especially, you know, uh, like I, I love the fact that, you know, our previous guest, you know, talked about, you know, uh, the way, you know, there's been a high alarm of suicides and, you know, people are not speaking up. Yeah. So for you, you will say you're advocating for people to actually speak up. Yeah. You know, you could speak up in our company, somebody else's company, and they'll be like, nope. You speak up, you are out. Yeah, it's important to break that stigma. And I think it's also, um, there's lack of tools as well. So people don't know what avenue to speak. So you speak and then what, right? right. So this is why it's like platforms like Bonga, which is something that I work very closely with. It's www.bonga.or.ke. It's free anonymous counseling that can save your life. Right. And people don't realize that there's avenues, there's help out there. And if you don't speak, then until you don't speak, then you're not going to get the help that you definitely need. Right. So knowing that these avenues exist and breaking that stigma go hand in hand and they work really well together. Right. Uh, in, your, in, in, your, in your agency that you said, it's imminent or eminent? Eminent. Eminent, right. Yeah. You've managed to work with a couple of Hollywood personalities who are still there. How is that experience and how has it inspired you even to take on this journey of consultancy? It's a lot of pressure. I mean, it's, it was, it's been happening during a pandemic with a lot that was going on behind the scenes as well. So it's a lot of pressure seeing them choose such big names and then you know they come to me for to work and collaborate together so I've gotten a lot of advice now and I'm able to stand my ground I feel a lot better so it's, it's been it's been an interesting experience for sure right yeah now uh let's now away from that now let's come back to you know uh media media houses mm -hmm. or media companies do you do you think that uh, especially in the Kenya media space there's enough of, of, of advocacy even when it comes to you know uh, visibility the numbers really matter a lot and I love the fact that you talked about social media do you think it's an avenue that's exploited enough to actually just bring out you know that excellence in terms of execution content wise right. you mentioned audience research etc I think we're just scratching the surface of it. We're getting there now more and more. I mean, watching amazing content creators creating these amazing advertisements that we never thought was possible, right? right. Um, we're seeing this happening in real time on different platforms, which is amazing to see. So I think we're just starting on the surface of it. I would love for, you know, how we've made politicians the celebrities in Kenya. I would love to create the media personalities to now become these big, as big as the politicians that we've created into these celebrities. 
movies. Right. I think that's when we really hit the mark. Like right. in America, like in Hollywood, how you hardly know who's in Senate, but you know who Kim Kardashian is, you right. know? <laughs> I, think, I think it would be nice to switch it around now. Right. Yeah. Now, when it comes to an individual station, mm -hmm. they want to actually have these huge numbers on social media. You know, uh, there's others who would come on board and say, hey, please, let's take on an influencer. They'll give us a little bit of, you know, of color, give us that little flavor that we want. Would you advise, especially um, for somebody who wants quick, let's say quick success mm -hmm. in terms of even uh, the visibility of their brand and their company, would you advise them to go for influencers who actually come with the cloud chasing part to actually bring the numbers or do you tell them to sit down call a professional have a strategy and then okay. you can come up with a final you know masterpiece of what you're gonna do i think having a strategy is the avenue that i definitely go towards and then having an integration of both um, people with high following and low because people don't forget like micro influencers have the people right. so if you have five followers and you can sell five t-shirts to them then you've done that part that job well if you have a million followers and you can only sell five t-shirts then I mean it, it doesn't make sense so having a mix of both is very essential as well so you get to tap into both markets you get the information to go out there but you also get the product to be sold which right. is the end of the day the end goal right and our content wise uh, what do you think should be the direction of our con of, of content especially uh, for radio now let's say specifically for radio because radio is more um, is more audio but now it, it it's it's the convergence world it's TV meet radio, radio meet TV. It's now on one platform. You right. can listen to somebody's show in states and you, you can, you're still able to listen to them and watch them as they do their presenter links and talk in the studio. Now, in this generation, where we are all about visibility, how do we integrate that and come up with, with a masterpiece that will actually appeal to your audience as well? I think people have a short attention span, so uh, quick skits as well in between, seeing interactions, seeing the behind the scenes. Information to me is one of my favorite like, parts of a platform, right? right. Right. So um, giving little like tips and tricks behind the scenes what goes really well hand in hand. Um, while it comes to on-air content, then shifting it to meet your audience, the audience that you definitely know. So if you're talking to 18 to 25, understanding what they're like, or understanding the short skits that they'd want to see, and then integrating that with your social media. So having synergy with every part of what you're doing. So what you sound like on radio needs to look like on social media, it needs to look like, let's say, on TV as well, if you're right. lucky to be on all the platforms. Right. How important are graphics and color? Because yes. we live in a generation that's so bold. Yes. We love color. Yes. Everything that's so attractive is actually colorful. How important is it to have I'm, color? Right. I'm in a bright pink dress. So, right, right. <laughs> so I think you can see a color is super important to me. Right, um, yeah. I think it just brightens up the mood. And people don't forget that uh, there's a psychology to color as well. There's a reason why certain social media platforms are blue, because it's a calming color. You know, they want you to go there a lot more. So simple things like understanding the psychology of color can go a very, very long way. That's right. another tip that I think a lot of people need to realize. Uh, so it helps with the graphics as well. It helps, you know, if you want a bold statement, you're going to pick these type of colors. If you want a more su a subdued statement, then you're going to pick these colors. I think it goes a very long way, understanding your color scheme. Right. Uh, now let's go back to you personally. You are redefining yourself. I'll say you're rebranding. Oh, you, yes. uh, would you say you've already rebranded? I you... think I'm on the way. You are on the way. Yes. I think right. it's, oh, it's always, entrepreneurship is always ups and downs, right? Ooh, right? It's not always smooth sailing. It's really picking yourself up and sometimes falling down. Right. And speaking of that, how, how important is patience? <laughs> Even when you're uh, taking on this journey of, you know, you're setting a podcast for yourself, yeah. you want it to be visible, you want the numbers out there. Yeah. How important is it to be patient? Because patience is now, is, is, it should be taught in school because yeah. you can get anxious out here yeah. trying to look for results. Yeah. I think it doesn't help seeing other people doing it and it looks like they're doing it faster or it looks easier for them. So sometimes even I have to talk myself off the ledge and be like, no, be consistent. You'd rather a good product that takes a long time right. than something that's rushed. You can do this. You know, it's giving yourself a pep talk. So patience is even my, it's not my strong suit, but I am working towards being a patient person. I think it should be a pill to be sold at the chemist so that we can go Honestly. by and take it on a <laughs> daily basis. <laughs> now, uh, back to you still. Uh, for uh, let's say your audience or uh, let's say uh, clients who approach you, what exactly do they uh, uh, should they rather expect from you? Like for example, if they're reaching out on different specific needs that mm -hmm. they want to actually you know solve, uh, what are some of the things that they should get from you? 
I love, I love that question. So it depends on what you're looking for exactly and it depends on what type of client you are. So let's say you are an individual, a musician, and you just want more visibility, you want to get yourself onto different media houses or for interviews, um, then I would ask you come towards me for uh, interview structure and what questions to avoid, what questions to ask, wh you know, how to conduct yourself during the interview, showing up on time, simple things like that. Um, and then also how to structure a social media post and content schedule. And then right. the great thing about working with Eminent is let's say if you are a company that's coming towards us, then they also now come in with a website. They create and design a website for you for an entire year. You have full access to it. Uh, you just pay a very small fee. And then they also teach you the back end on like how to see the numbers, what time to post, what time to talk to these certain type of people. Um, it just depends on client. It's a very client by client basis. Right. And, you know, clients come with different needs. There's those who, like, come, they disappear, whatnot, yeah. things happen, you get upset. But, you know, sometimes uh, when people are approaching you, how do you decipher that this is a genuine client, this one has a long-term, you know, need, and maybe before I venture into that, yeah. uh, I should consider some two, three things. How do you actually de decide for that? So I will say, because the company is quite new, I mean, we just started earlier this year. Right. That has been such a lesson as well, you know, people time-wasting. Um, so that one, I can honestly say that is learning as we go along. I can, do not have a definite answer for that. Right. It's definitely learning as we go along. So far, it's been quite good. There's only been like one or two people I've worked with where it didn't, nothing manifested from it. Right. Um, but that was also a learning curve. And sometimes you might not be ready to work with somebody and you have to also say no. You have to also step back and be like, I don't think I can give you everything that you need. I think right. that's big, the bigger lesson. Right. Yeah. Now, a little bit playful. There was a time I exited Nairobi. Yeah. And uh, you know the way you enter a city and there's a billboard that say, welcome to Kenya? Yeah. You had a billboard just, I think, in CBD and even just yeah. at the entrance to us <laughs> Nairobi for a very long time yeah. with everything that you were doing that time. How did it feel being on a billboard for a very long time <laughs> at the center of a town? It was amazing. How was the feedback? Well, how were people reacting to It was to amazing. You? My okay. show show every single time would take a photo. So How are you feeling mentally? Every like I was like, this is amazing. And I don't look like that. And most of the time I didn't look like that, you know? Okay. My hair uh -huh. was like scrunchy. I was like in sweatpants. And I just look at the billboard and I'm like, wow, this is actually, I've, I've done it. That's been such a goal of mine. And it, I was so honored to just, oh my gosh, I did it. You know, that's right, so exciting. Yeah. It's, it's a great feeling. Right. To have, yeah. And how did your family actually take take, take that up, especially your siblings, I your think dad, they your I mom? think they took it more serious. Okay. You know, African parents in media is still quite a niche option. So I think they were like, okay, she's not joking about this. She's going for gold. And they were super proud as well. And my aunties and uncles were super proud. So it was, I was honored, like beyond honored. Wow. And it was nice, the billboard uh, that he's describing I was with my co-hosts, so it was nice to kind of have my friends there next to me. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, in that moment. It was, it was nice. I really can't wait to be on a billboard myself. Please, the universe, hear me out. Now, yes, I'm just playing. Hint, hint. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about matters uh, COVID-19. Of course, when the pandemic struck, a lot of business were affected. You know, others shut down. Others, you know, have never like managed to even reinstate themselves and come back. Yeah. How did that go for you? Especially that time, you know, when also the mainstream space was actually shaken. There's a lot of yes. people who are sent home, you know, uh, there are no jobs, companies are not hiring anymore, yeah. and things were quite murky now. How did it go on for you? That it shook me to the core. So that's what made me start, um, start doing media consultancy. Because I was like, I need to own something that's my own, that cannot be taken away. The media is not going to go away, but I could go away from employment. So it really did shake me to my core. And seeing a lot of friends and family losing their jobs left, right, and center, um, it, it devastated me. And then that's what even pushed me into mental health a lot more as well. Uh, starting conversations on my social media platform, on my stories, especially on mental health, teaming up with different podcasts as well that deal with mental health um, because it made me realize I need to own something of my own. So, right. You know, nothing, no one can take this away from <clears throat> me, which right. is a great feeling now to own, own something. Right. Um, and even if you're starting small, just to know that you can do it as right. well. 
but it shook me to my core. I think it shook a lot of us to our core. Right. And would you say you've recovered before we get to a quick fire yes. <laughs> question? Yes. Yeah. yes. yeah. You've yeah. recovered I think, now? I everything think, is good? Yeah, everything. Everything is a lot better. Right. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if it's ever going to be back to normal, right. but it is better. Yeah. Right. Now, um, be before we actually sum it up, um, I want us to um, just ask you a, a, a few playful questions right now. Okay. Uh, one thing that you are embarrassed of yourself, because w I know when somebody's on a billboard, oh. the insecurity galore that comes to you, maybe for you it's different, but I know, I, I know there's, there's just a certain <laughs> way that you feel, especially if you're thrown at the deep end, a lot of people are looking up to you, they know you're financially in check, you're yeah. mentally in check. A lot of people expect a lot from you. Yeah. <laughs> what was that one embarrassing moment I can't dance and Kenyans are very quick to let you know when you like I am a terrible dancer right you have two left feet <laughs> yeah honestly then they are, they stop moving even so I didn't realize how quick Kenyans are and how witty right. and terrifying Kenyans can be because <laughs> my word they will let you quite crazy, oh you know, my especially gosh on socials. yeah right. you didn't even realize a joke could go for so long so right. I think that was yeah Right. Now, two things that you can't leave your house without. Bef before we get to exactly what do you carry in your handbag every morning when okay. you leave the house. <laughs> Just two, two, three around. Uh, two things I can't leave without. Lip gloss and my phone. Yeah. Lip gloss and your phone. Yeah. What about umbrella? Because sometimes, okay. No. Nah. Story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather sing along or dance to your favorite music and why? I'm singing then. I told, we talked about the dancing thing. Right. It's terrible. So I love to, I'd like to sing. Yeah. yeah you, you'd sing? Yeah, I'd sing. All right. Now, this should, be, this should be also some kind of, you know, a little bit of a superpower. Would you have, uh, would you rather have everybody read your thoughts? Or would you rather like be numb mentally and never recover for real, for oh real, but still be able to do everything in the world that you desire? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Oh my, um, I'm gonna go with numb. You'd yeah. rather be numb? I'd rather be numb than, than people read my thoughts. Right. Yeah. Now, what, oh one my of the, uh, gosh! I'm going to ask you the same question. Please do not. No, do I must. That was not. a terribly please good do question. Please do not. You put me in the deep end. I'm going to ask my co-host that question today as well. What would you rather? I don't know, but I think I'll, I'll think through. I'll think through and text you. I'll give you a call. Okay, we, yeah. We I'll have give a, you a PowerPoint call. presentation on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, uh, one of the you know one of the main main core uh, core aspects of actually this space is to actually you know receive feedback and mm. you know people must give you compliments. How do you take that? Especially people who just arrogantly approach you and they're like, "Oh, this, so this is Anne. Okay, hey, can we go out on a date?" Oh, ooh. oh, you're asking about my dating life. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm a really awkward person. I'm a very shy person. Actually, really? people don't, yeah, people don't expect that, though. For real? Because yeah, uh, on my social media, it's just like so out there and, and stuff like that. It's, it's a persona, definitely. Um, it's a part of me, yes, but it's not my entirety of, of my character. So um, I'm, I, I'm super shy and people don't really approach me that much. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. You better be kidding right Hence now. Hence why I'm so you single. You better be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we, as we, as we exit, uh, what is that one thing, you know, that you hold on to so dear? that you've learned as a lesson even in this journey of media consultancy that you love to pass to a person who is watching back at home and tell them that this is how things should go. In as much as it can't go exactly as it is, but at least hold on to this line. The company you keep are the people who are going to make and break you. And they're the people who are going to hold your hand through the good times, the bad times. So uh, choose them wisely, be it family, be it friends. That's the biggest lesson and the biggest blessing I've I've had this far. I, didn't, I haven't made it to this point so far without the support system of great family and great friends. So I think definitely choose your circle wisely. Right. It will make the, the biggest difference. And then I would also say when it comes to media, we all pretty much don't really know what we're doing. Everyone's taking it a day at a time. But if you're willing to learn and you're open-minded, then uh, it, it gets easier and it gets better a lot faster. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, if somebody wants to access you and yes. maybe consult a few, two or three things from you in media, where do they find you? Yes, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it's all, it's, it's Anne Moira, even Twitter as well. So ITS and then Anne Moira. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's where they can find you. Yeah. All right. And also you can continue chanting with us at Y254 channel. <laughs> That's where you can find us on all the social media platforms. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Remember on Instagram, there's an underscore in my socials is at Brian Sako 101. We have been to we have been speaking to the one and only Anne Mara. She's a media preneur. And by the way, I forgot to ask about you know uh, the events hosting part, but oh, we'll yeah. see it on your social media or we'll invite you next time. It's a good <laughs> excuse to come back. <laughs> right, right. At least you have something to hold on. Okay. So you, we are taking a small break when we come back we still have uh, two amazing guests who are going to come uh, to actually share with us insights on financial literacy how do you accumulate wealth how do you attract wealth how do you ensure that you're in check financially they'll be coming up next in just a bit but that has been Anne Maura thank you so much for hanging out with us and thank, thank you for you. coming thank you so much honestly thank you it's so fun, like fantastic to finally meet you so, right yeah <laughs> I feel good I feel good <laughs> anyways I'm playing and uh, we're taking a small break when we come back we'll have so much more lined up.